Hi everybody, I'm Carl and welcome back to Knack3D Designs. In our last episode, you remember we went ahead and marked out the two holes that are going to go on our 4080C beams. The one for the slide tray to enter in and the one where the switch enclosure is going to come out on the other side. In this episode, we're going to go ahead and cut out those two holes. We're also going to cut out a hole at the front at tops of each of these beams for our wiring to come out and enter into our X and our Y axis. We're also going to drill four holes on the bottom and tap those out to mount our rubber feet. Now before we get started, I just want to remind everybody, if you want to help support the channel and future projects, I have a wish list and a PayPal me link in the bottom of the description. And with that being said, let's get started. All right, so I've got all four corners drilled out here and one hole on each side over there. Now I'm going to take my plunge cutter and hopefully cut this out nice and neat. Um, if I fail, well, you guys will know shortly. And I just burned it up. Oh, for those of you who can't see, this sucker's smoking. So we're going to give it a break. <laughs> All right, so it's had a little time to cool down. Let's see if I can at least finish this piece. All right, there's our hole cut out. Now I'm just gonna take file, clean up the edges a little bit. so I can see what I'm doing here because we have to file down this groove right here for the slide tray to go in and engage into the 2040 extrusion that's going to be bolted on the inside of this. So we're going to file all the way back till about an eighth of an inch from that hole just leaving a small little strip on this side and a small little strip on this side between the hole and the notch. Now we'll try test fitting the tray, see if it fits through. And right now that is a no, still too tight. And it looks like everything shifted just that way a little bit, so I need to take more off of this edge here. Voila! As you can see, there's our hole, and there's our notch on each side for the slide tray to go through. Only thing left to do is I'm going to pull my Dremel out with a sanding wheel and take off all these burrs in here so I don't cut my hands or the wires on it later. Now 
That should take care of our first piece. Tomorrow, because this needs to cool down some more, I'll cut the other piece. All right, so now I'm gonna try and cut out the second hole here. As you can see, I put a couple extra layers of tape because I wanna really be careful I don't skip over and mess up the anodizing. I'm gonna try and cut through this top layer here first and I'm hoping I can plunge cut through the rest of this. close. Alright, so there I got my hole. It's test fitted with the, the switch end. A little tight still, but I want to wait till I can hook the rails up and test fit it. I am going to clean it up real quick with the Dremel. Alright, so next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to set it up. I'm going to put the two rails on and test fit with the slide tray and the switch enclosure. Alright, so I've gone ahead and took two 2040 extrusions, slid them in to the C-channel, and bolted them on through the front right here. Now, I did make some specially cut down... There we go. Specially cut down metric 5 bolts because I didn't want to scratch the extrusion and I didn't want to have to take and notch it out so the bolt would fit so I turned these down on my lathe now you can take a Dremel and cut that down so it would fit in through nice and neat or if you've got a lathe like I do you can cut a couple bolts down now what I'm gonna do is what I've gone ahead and assembled the switch enclosure to the slide tray now Obviously, I had a belt printer to print this long tray on. You can break it up into pieces and glue it together for a temporary until you have your belt printer done. You really only need to do the piece for the circuit board and for the power supply. A little bit in the middle, who cares? But just for testing purposes, I've gone ahead and mounted this together. We just want to see if it's going to slide in. It's nice and snug. I actually like it because it kind of locks in place a little bit. And the plastic will, of course, wear in over time anyway. But I'm going to say it's a success. We have the second hole cut. Next step will be to cut a couple holes on each of the extrusions for the wires to go into this tube here and a hole down at the end. And we'll do that on both sides, but that'll be the next step. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to cut an opening to gain access to the top channel here. You gotta keep in mind where your top is. You're sliding your tray in like this. So this is your top channel running all the way along here. So we need to get access to this channel, which if you look here, you kinda already do. But I'm gonna go ahead and notch out just the bottom of this part of the rail here because we will have something covering this. And get into here and I'm gonna open this up a little bit more so I can easily feed wire in there. See the opening right up here. That's going to get us into our channel so we can feed our wire up to the front of the extrusion.
Right there is our channel. Next thing we will need to do is drill holes up here. I'll have to measure out and mark those. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to mark where we're gonna put the holes down on this end on the top so that we can feed the wire in and down to this end and bring it out to feed into the upper part of our printer. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and grab both the left and right stepper mounts just set them in place where they're going to go. You want to flush them up against the end of the extrusion like this. We're just going to trace a line right across the front. Just like that. And then do the same for the other side. And just for people that are looking for measurements, looks like that line is 40 millimeters in from the end. What we want to do is we want to remove this center piece in this space here. I'm going to go about 15 millimeters. Let's go with. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and make a punch mark about the center of that. Now I'm going to drill that out as much as I can and then I'm going to try and cut around the rest. We want to just cut enough to get down into this opening. Leave us enough to feed a bundle of wires up through it. Alright, taking a fairly large drill bit and opened up the top of this little bit. Now I'm just going to try and clear a little bit more of a track for the wire. And now I'm just going to try and get it to where it's down within the rails here. Keep in mind this area is going to pretty much be covered by your stepper cover. Now just to give everybody an idea of what we've been doing, we're going to feed our wire harness in through this opening. Now it comes out the end here, or now we can pull the wire out the top and we'll be able to run it up those diagonal extrusions for our y-axis the wires that come down let's see this is our switch side so this is going to be the whole bundle that comes up to the top and down to the the hot end so okay so again i've got a good hole started already now i just got to cut it down so i can bring the wires out a little bit to the left or the right to avoid the stepper motor the belts and such All right, and we have four last holes to drill, and then we are pretty much done with these bottom extrusions. All right, so right now we're looking at the tops. When you look at the bottom of both pieces,
And we need to measure in from the ends on all four, or all four ends. Three inches or 76 millimeters. And then you need to find the center, obviously. So we're gonna have in 20 millimeters, since it's a 40 by 20 extrusion. We're gonna be in a 40 by 80 extrusion. And then we're gonna center punch all of these marks. Now for these, they're going to be to hold our rubber feet in place. So we're going to drill these out with a two and a half millimeter drill bit and then tap these out to metric three. I've taken the beams over to my drill press and drilled the four two and a half millimeter holes. Now I'm just going to tap them out with a metric three tap. All right, so. We are pretty much done drilling holes in our extrusions with the exception of one spot, which we can't do until I've really got it all together. We will need to eventually drill the two holes right here and tap them out for the thumb screws that hold the slide tray in place. But I prefer to do that after the slide tray is installed and everything, so we sure we have them for the perfect placement of how, where that wants to sit. So we'll save that for after we have the whole bottom end assembled and slide tray in fit it in place. Next thing to do is go strip all this blue painters tape off and hose these pieces down and try and get all the little filings and everything out of it because we really don't want them getting on our circuit boards or in our wiring or anything. So I'm going to clean these up and we'll be back. All right so that wraps up cutting all the holes in our 4080C beams. Coming up we're going to assemble the bottom part of the chassis. We're going to install some heat sets in our plastic printed parts and we're going to install some idler pulleys and bearings and stuff like that in it. So uh, lots coming here real soon as fast as I get this video edited. So uh, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you soon.